Hey everybody, Jim here again, and I'm doing another installation and review on the EcoSmart 8. Except this time, instead of the pigtail that it had previously, this is going to be hardwired. And I'm using this to replace a friend's tank water heater. He got sick of this, it's full of rust and uh, from sitting here for so long. And we're just going to uh, replace it uh, with a quick one-for-one -one and it should be fine. So. We'll see how that goes. So I called to EcoSmart and they explained to me that this warranty void is seal broken uh, sticker doesn't actually mean anything. You can actually break that. In fact, you can't wire this up unless you break that seal. So you tease out this screw. Uh, let me go knock these out quick. And there it is. So here you can see there's a spot to wire in the two hots. And over here on the kettle is this single solitary green screw so that I can hot in the ground wire. Uh, strangely, they've put in this series of jumpers for 6, 7, 8, 11, 13 uh, kilowatts. We're going to leave it where it's at at 8 kilowatts. I'm guessing they just use the same computer for each one and uh, assume that the guy manufacturing it is putting the jumper in the right place. Everything else is the same, except now we can look inside and see this beautiful, uh, looks like brass kettle. And your coil comes in here. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this wired. So something I picked up off the internet in somebody else's video is that the black washer that comes in this cap from the sides, I thought this was just some sort of goofy protective cap, but you can tuck these washers inside the bushing that goes from compression down to NPT, and according to what I read on the internet, it forms a good seal. So we're going to see if that's actually the case. So we've managed to fix some of the plumbing. We're getting closer, but we're going to have to put, a, put some boards up here so that we're not driving screws into the back of the electrical panel on the other side of this wall. That was a great idea. So we, we put the screws in based upon this keen template, which is easy enough to understand. And here you can see where there is a connector for the two hots, and then welded right onto the kettle is this spot where the green screw is connected, and that's where we're going to put the ground. So let me coax this into place, and then I'll take you inside and show you the electrical panel and the breaker that we've set up. All right, that's it. So I've got my two hots and the ground. Let me go inside. So coming in from the next room through the back of this service panel, you can see the ground going up into the ground bar and then this keen thing and my buddy Mike is going to plug it in. All right, we're not going to turn it on until we flood it with water and get all the air out of the lines. All right. So I've managed to coax the pipes into place and I used three quarter to half inch reducing bushings and I, I went with brass this time because I just didn't feel like being a Luddite and using galvanized. So it's going to be a lot classier and it's going to last a lot longer, uh, maybe 50 years instead of 20 or 30 years. And uh, now I'm going to turn on the water and just check for leaks and see if we can bleed all the air out of the lines. Water's on. Did you want me to turn the hot water on and let it run through it? Is the water on under the house? No. <laughs> all right, we've got to turn the water on under the house. <laughs> all right, so my buddy, he turned it on. Let's see what we get. All right, it's flowing into the kitchen. Oh, I shut that, I shut that off in there a while ago. I turned it back on. Oh, okay. Alright, so I'm going to go turn off the hot water in the kitchen, and then we'll energize this. It looks like we might get some rain. Ooh. Alright, so the hoses are charged, and all and the air has been bled out of the lines. So I'm going to clean up a lot of this pipe dope. Yep. And we're going to let this sit for 20 minutes and just see if there are any leaks. You know, we'll, we'll constantly monitor it for leaks, but typically in the first 20 minutes is when you're going to see your first leak. 
Mm, let's see. Boy, that looks good. So it's been 20 minutes, and I'm looking at all the connections, and there is no water. Right, I think we're going to be fine. And I, so I'm going to hop this up and see if we get hot water. Here we go. All right, so I'm turning this on, turn on some hot water, and see what happens. I don't think I need that much hot water. There we go. Breaker hasn't been blown. <laughs> All right. So it's trying to produce 80 degrees Fahrenheit water. I think we can do a little better than that. Try to take. Try to tell you so. Nope. You wouldn't have thought it if you were sitting around. Probably not. All right. Let me stomp the water and see if I can adjust the temperature that way. All right, so I've turned it off, turned it back on. For some reason, it doesn't want to... It's, it's not listening to the knob. Well, that's... That's unfortunate. Now what? Okay, so I've... Turned it on. I should be able to adjust the temperature here. Something has gone terribly wrong. Now what? Let me put the cover on and see if that fixes it. Well, I don't know if I have a dysfunctional unit. This, this hasn't been a problem in the past. But when I push on it and then spin the dial, nothing happens. But if I... If I get it to start listening and then tug on the dial a little bit I can kind of get that to work so I'm gonna leave that at 120 Fahrenheit and see if we'll, we'll just continue testing I'm, I'm gonna reach out to EcoSmart when they open tomorrow and see if this is a, a problem typical to their units I'm gonna fire up the hot water just to see what we're doing in fact you know what let me start with the cold water this time. All right, we're gonna measure the cold water coming out of the ground. All right, it's, it's October in Pensacola, Florida, and the water's coming out of the ground right around 79 and a half degrees, which is about right. Let's see what happens when we turn it up to hot. Blowing it every bit of two plus gallons. We're going to see how hot it gets. Alright, so it looks like we're maxed out at 108 at about two gallons flow. Now, this is, this is going to be a very luxurious shower. So, in order to go from 80 degrees up to 108 degrees, that's a 38 degree Fahrenheit increase in temperature at about two gallons per minute. It's drawing every bit of 30, almost 33 amps. That's actually not really bad. So I'm gonna close this thing up, but uh, honestly, I'm, I'm really disappointed with the fact that they're not including the pigtail any longer. This isn't that big a deal to have to hardwire it inside. So I, I don't really mind it that much. <laughs> I'm wasting it. <laughs> you didn't see what I had in my hand or you would have spoke up. <laughs> oh, I saw it. I got tough skin. So, yeah, you, you're, uh, this is a one-for-one -one replacement with a hot water tank. I'm going to be doing more and more of these because my American friends don't want to... Ouch. <laughs> that'll shock you if you... Don't stick your hand inside of that thing. That, that'll shock you. My American friends don't want tank water heaters anymore, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it works out okay. 
So I'm going to follow up with EcoSmart and see if there is some flaw with the dial that's causing it to require me to tug it a little bit in order to adjust the temperature. But other than that, I'm real happy. I learned a lot making this video, and I hope you did too. Thanks so much for watching.